the final ending to the details to this madness. Part one down below. Wife is still in some grieving her imaginary affair, complaining about me controlling her, saying she will stay with me because she doesn't want anyone else, loves me, whatever face. It just makes me less and less wanting to be with her. I see now that she is immature and not the marriage type of woman. I will give this, her some more time to see if we can work things through, and if not, just nuke. Update. It is a weird feeling of gratefulness but I thank you all for the inputs which have kept me awake and prevented me staying in denial. I continued to gather evidence and depress her. Wife confessed to Pia claims it was two meetings. First one they used protection, both left early from work to hotel, and second, they didn't use protection, night out. She is not pregnant, period occurred. She claims him to be ideal for her affair due to her not seeing him as a partner for anything more than that. Allegedly, after I contacted him the first time before her confession to Pa, he withdrew due to fear of being outed to his wife. So, the affair is off at the moment, perhaps not, makes no difference. My W is angry at me for stepping in and ending her adventure and angry at him for putting her second. She admits she wants the affair to continue so that's why it makes no difference to me whether it really is ongoing. After that confession of hers, in a phone conversation I confronted OM again with findings and he went on to apologize and told he will feel remorse for the rest of his life and that all that should have never happened. My W then gave me a lot of other compromising info on him and his marriage, obviously wanting him to be punished for rejecting her. I went to his wife and gave her that info, some of which was pretty intimate regarding his feelings towards his family. That night he called me asking was it true that I was at his house, I confirmed. He obviously thought his wife was bluffing. I suppose that later on she passed on the details that showed it was no bluff. I texted him to come out and have a drink with me, but he hasn't answered since. No contact from either of them since, it has been a week now. My wife told me that she tried to call him at work yesterday but he didn't answer. She acts differently throughout the days, from showing remorse, to anger, to grief of losing her affair. She claims to want to stay married to me, and continues to express affection, except in her anger, depression seizures. In these bad states of mind, she says she doesn't want to be married to anyone, she doesn't want family commitments, she will let me have the kids in case of divorce, and each and every day she is asking me not to leave her. I analyzed the situation and concluded that all this was a logical course of events, due to her taking it step by step year by year guy by guy, flirts at work, coffees at work, drinks at work, falling in love at work and now this. If she had more freedom, which she had but had no courage, all this would just have happened earlier. So now we are at a crossroad. We do usual family stuff together, we have good bonding, mostly she initiates, she admits having other feelings too, it is sort of a cuckold thing I guess without all that fetish scenario stuff. She doesn't want to promise her fidelity to me. She says that after having that affair she feels better about herself. She wants to stay married but she doesn't want to give up on her freedom. We finalize the apartment purchase and I consider that to be the family home for the kids. As for the financial aspect, if I went abroad again, which she pleads me not to do, I could pay off the whole 15-year loan within two years, perhaps even one year. For now, I choose to stay home and pay it off together with my wife. I myself have taken some actions. I started taking some medication to balance myself. I went to a lawyer and started building a divorce case, even though at this moment I still haven't decided to file, just to have it ready to push the right buttons from the start. For the moment I enjoy being around the kids and I don't want to leave my family home. My feelings are starting to change and I want to give it time to help myself make the best decision and actions for myself and my kids. I know most of you here will condemn my moves and I agree that there is a high probability that my wife will continue to act worse and file for divorce herself someday maybe even soon, or it will be me not being able to stand it anymore. I did think that we had something special, and I did read here that most people think that and I did realize that I probably am wrong. But each and every story is special in its own way, and I can't resist the curiosity of what will be happening. May sound absurd, but we still have some intrinsic thing going on between us. In the end hell breaks loose. She went to talk to Am at work today, to get closure, more probably to get status. She informed me about it when we got home and that he is not interested in pursuing the affair therefore no reason for me to worry. It also slipped her lips that the guy said that, on the evening of the day I spoke to his wife, he thought about getting a gun and coming after me. I asked her what her reaction to that and she was said that she didn't think he really meant it because he was so upset at being out of the day and their conversation was ending anyway around that moment. I was left numb which she didn't notice and went on with house routine and moments later I saw her smirking at me. I asked her why she is doing that and she said she is thinking about being messed by someone in a rough way. I asked did she have anyone in mind and she told him, of course, not even I need an explanation on that. How on earth, given the laws favoring mothers, can I save my two daughters and run away with them? I can no longer make it through a day without medication, but it makes it difficult for me to concentrate for work or driving. I avoid family and friends and my self-esteem is gone. Counseling doesn't help at all. Only thing that keeps me above is being around my kids. OMW called me. 
O.M. sold her the story that there was no bonding and my W. was just stalking him and they had a few drinks in a public setting. O.M. W. seems to buy it. She obviously prefers to move on acting as nothing happened. I called on about his threats and offered to meet anywhere anytime so he can say it to my face. He declined and insisted that he made no threats. I am disgusted by the weakness of this man. I decided to ignore their existence. We started expressing some remorse. I don't believe it to be sincere. I see she is still thinking a lot about the situation. Her infatuation with Am has clearly faded since he really gave her up in a most repulsive way. He disposed her like a used handkerchief. She is trying to get back to our life, but she is still processing her feelings and is in fact distant from marriage and family. I do almost all the work around the kids. I don't mind that actually because hugs of those small arms mean the difference between life and death for me at the moment. Before Pa happened, she told me to give her space and time and to trust her she will handle it on her own. And she did. I know now that, even if I could have stopped it, it would make no difference now. The betrayal took place way before actual Pa. Even though I believe her there were none prior to this one, I take it as a fact that there possibly could have been. W keeps stating that I will probably leave her eventually. Sometimes she asks me not to leave her. I don't see her as a person anymore, more like a memory or a fantasy. I started to feel not loving her anymore but it is complicated. I even told her about my feelings. She claims to be shocked but I don't see it meaning much to her. Just the thought of her being left is bothering her. She has become slow and disconnected. House chores of 10 minutes last for at least an hour. I see she is not well but she seems not wanting to change the way she feels. I thought about ways of picking myself up, about all that 180 stuff or any sort of taking my own path, but I feel like I need the chance for one big fight. One chance to say how I feel, because she never asks. Nobody asks. I feel shut down by the world. I have no one to talk to. Her responses always come down to, it would have been better if you never found out about this. She thinks she would have taken this lesson to the grave and I would be left unhurt. I am more prone to believe that I would eventually find out, and if not, it would happen again as I see she learned no lessons. I do agree that for her it would be better if she hid this. I am now fighting to keep my job which I endangered by abruptly leaving the project I was on when problems at home occurred. The outcome is still unknown. Most probably I will be offered a position in home office. But I started making inquiries to go abroad again for another company, and the feedback is promising. In that case I would see no point at is continuing my marriage, which makes me wonder what is the point even now so. I am trying to understand why I am so horrified of breaking up this family. Some people perhaps can walk away easily, but I don't have that strength and determination. I feel completely lost and alone. I did talk to one person, a good male friend of mine who is 53 years old married with three grown kids and two of us went through some serious danger together and I trust him to the grave. He told me not to hurry anything but to stick it out for the kids because they are the only thing that matters. But even he is appalled by my W's actions. We talk almost every day, he is currently in another country. Anyway, talk did help a bit, but actually not all that much. I am losing my mind day by day and increasing medication. Crisis escalated. I can't stand waiting and swallowing all that pain. I stood up and put up a conflict. Here is how conversation went on, in main lines. I drove her to work and in front of the building there was a colleague of hers and I noted that might be her ex-lover. She laughed and said that wasn't him but another colleague and that they don't even resemble. I purposely escalated. W, that guy is so nice, he also walks away from flirting just like you. Well, I am not nice since I took your lover away from you and now you hate me for it. W, I have no bad feelings for you, I just sometimes flip angry but more and more I see there is no reason for me to act that way. And you say that your behavior hasn't changed since this started. And you don't see how that affair drove our marriage to the verge. W, do you really think it is that serious? I have nothing to think, I am 100% in here and my vision is not blurred. W, and mine still is. Well, you certainly still feel the affair. W, less and less. When you return maybe you will see what is left here. W, from your side or mine. Both. W, so, you are getting cold about me. I don't know but I do know I lost my faith. W, faith. In us. W, okay. Sounds bad but should I lie? W, okay. I deserve this and I will keep my mouth shut. This is not about deserving. Just focus on your recovery. If it was true love, take your time to heal. W, don't make me laugh about that true love. But I still can't believe you said we can have extramarital bonding. I didn't. I said the wows have been broken so there are no obstacles for those who want to. W, okay. Will you tell me if you cheat on me? I don't have anyone to cheat on. W, okay. File for divorce. I don't want to listen to this. And I want to stop sleeping with you for a longer period of time due to these things you say. If I am nobody, we have no reason to touch each other. Me, so, it's not because you just don't want to sleep with me. Except from pity or manipulation. Since her lover gave her the no contact her drive went away. W, duck off. You have nobody to cheat on. How can I cheat when the wows have been broken? 
So, you stay behind this about no bonding and divorce. W, however, you wish. If I will be listening to this then yes, we will die apart, you in your perfect life and me in my misery. So, either I behave your way or I don't get angry anymore and I can also disappear. W, you are disgusting. Move out. I won't tolerate anyone spitting and crap on me. Telling the truth is not spitting. W, think where you can move away because I don't want to look at you anymore. Okay. W, don't come to vacation with us next two weeks. Move out by July 15th. We have nothing to talk about this way. Well, we only talked about you and your lover anyway. W, I am all that I am interested in anyway. I will sign the papers when you bring them. Tell nothing to the kids. Oh, so you decide for the kids yourself. W, nobody was interested in me up until two months ago. I am afraid we will never talk nice again. We only talk nice when I accept all your terms. W, I don't care. I know you don't. You showed it by cheating on me. W, get out. There it is. I know I handled this badly but emotions are just too strong. Now she texted me from her work. In short, I am sorry for the marriage because affairs are worth of no marriage but still happen. It annoys me that you couldn't get over this even if I now acted as the most wonderful person possible. All of you prefer lies and manipulations, even you the saint. So, it is not an insult that I am saying this should have been kept secret. What matters is that you are the one who chose to proclaim end of marriage. But it is actually about you not wanting, not being able to forgive. I thought it would be better not to say because I didn't want marriage to fall apart. But you wanted the truth even at the cost of falling apart. I had to call her regarding some kindergarten application. So, after we handled that, of course we got back to the subject. She now wants me to take the vacation and go with them. Our stay is planned in her sister's empty apartment in a seaside city. The July 15th moves out deadline was not mentioned again. She says that she doesn't want to listen any more of my accusations. She has had enough of that during this affair, enough during her EA five years ago and also in between. She wants me to decide on what happens next. She wants to stay with me but can't handle the condemnation. She also said that we should stop being intimate for a certain period of time. I told her that can be stopped unilaterally. Afterwards she texted me that she is sorry for doing all of this to us. But she can't accept that this can cancel all the years together. She proposes for us to think and not talk, that she gave me all the facts and not to call her a liar anymore. That I take time to decide. She also says that maybe we should be intimate anyway. I see that I am being manipulated but just can't seem to find an appropriate reaction. She texted me again. Will you allow me to fall in love with you again? Because with how you have been since you came home from abroad, you are not letting me. I feel this to be a very manipulative way of blame shifting. It starts to creep me out. Just for the record, I came home from abroad on a Wednesday, and two days later on Friday she had her first intercourse with Am. They left work earlier to go to a hotel. They met on May 4th, met up at work a few times in the following days, then first pa happened on May 26th, second one on June 2nd. I am haunted by images, of her falling for someone else so quickly and intensely, of her texting like a teenager, of her making arrangements to meet, of her putting maximum effort for those arrangements to go through, of her hiding all that stuff from me, of her asking me to trust her to handle it on her own, of two of them plotting lies together to keep me off track, of her talking to him about most intimate things in her life, of her listening about most intimate things in his life and actually caring about hearing it, of their physical contact without any boundaries of their immature but evident emotional contact also without boundaries, of her being distant at home thinking about where he is and what is he thinking. Is it possible to get over it and actually forgive? All that bullcrap of hers about falling in love again just makes me feel sick. What freaking falling in love is she talking about? I will try to give some explanations. Divorce laws in my country don't regard infidelity at all. Culturally, divorce is accepted as a common civil event. Of course, individual people have different opinions, but generally the society puts no specific cultural pressure on marriages. In case of divorce, in theory courts protect the children and in practice it comes down to favoring the mothers. A friend of mine who is divorced once met his five-year-old son accidentally in a crowded public setting we attended together. The boy ran to hug his dad but his mother stopped him. Father asked her to let him just have a few moments with his son, to which she replied that it is not his scheduled time. The boy started crying and screaming as she dragged him away. Father was helpless. Dozens of people witnessed that and stayed speechless. No consequences occurred. Only pain for the boy and his father. Anyway, O.M. is clearly out of the picture, if nothing, by his own choice. He wanted free fun, but then came the price. Exposure has jeopardized him and the fact that my wife has given me so many details, among which some are very intimate about him, angered him. It is clear that he has no feelings for her and only wanted to use her. He developed some kind of hostility towards her, and vice versa. Bad thing I realize is that what she resented him is actually him rejecting her. She still stayed in the state of being in love, some call it limerence but when it comes to her, hey, what the difference? I don't know how long this will last. I do know it will pass and probably she will start to feel like real crap about herself then. But again, it will be about herself. 
Yesterday after work she had another rage burst, that I didn't respect her enough before and that she was a good and faithful wife and I didn't appreciate that. So, she went on to do something that will give her a reason to endure all the accusations. Here I must add that the accusations were related to her previous escapades towards other men. I never acted possessive. I even didn't check up on her phone, mail or FB up until she admitted hooking up with this guy. To add absurd, yesterday evening she told me she resents me for not being possessive enough and how she tells all her female friends that her husband is not jealous, contrary to them who claim theirs are. She also told that she felt so bad about herself that she needed to be, I quote, messed by some male pig. I know that I have really given all the best of me, for what it's worth, into this marriage and family, and I can't get myself to just let it go. And the pain just seems to grow each day. She claims that she thinks what she did is bad, and says she is not proud of herself. But at the same time, it made her feel good in a certain way. She just expects me to forgive and forget and move on with our life together. She claims that she probably won't repeat this. I know there is no guarantee, but I also sense that she doesn't even want to be able to give guarantee. I believe that, by thinking to herself that she is entitled to potential affairs in future, it makes her feel more empowered and more worth to herself. Her insisting that we as a couple would have been better off if her affair had remained a secret has started to make me feel humiliated as a human, let alone a husband and it doesn't actually encourage me to restore trust in her. A few days ago, I told her that I think I don't love her anymore. I didn't say it to hurt her, I just wanted to share how I felt. Since then, she keeps repeating that I will leave her and that she knew she shouldn't have let that happen by confessing to me. I really don't have the mental power to comprehend all that. I don't know what my true feelings towards her are anymore, and I don't know how much time and what actions to take to clear it out within myself. I spoke to her on the phone. She said, since this affair ended, day by day I find it more and more unimaginable that I even had the slightest idea of leaving our marriage. Perhaps some filigree detail part of the meaning got lost in the translation. But I think I managed to translate the level of manipulation in that statement. This is so messed up that I almost want people to tell me get a grip, forgive her, the woman loves you beyond universe can't you see. After all, she is physically beautiful, has a unique personality which outstands among the others. Yes, sometimes in a creepy way, is a great partner for a whole range of conversations, and is obviously very intelligent, given the manipulation level raising constantly. In addition to that she is a responsible and caring mother, has a rational approach to money and assets, and puts effort to maintain the functioning and logistics of the household. But nevertheless, I couldn't resist but told her that I think our marriage died the moment when her affair turned physical. She snapped saying that she is fed up with listening to this, even though I have actually been saying so little lately, and that I just get a divorce if I want it. She hung up. So, she called me back a bit later to tell me that she doesn't want to get a divorce and that she can't believe I would end our marriage due to this infidelity incident. So, I repeated I consider her to be the one who ended it, and that now we are in a phase where we both individually need to determine what we want and then discuss it together. Now, I know that this is a fair approach, but I don't feel emotionally ready to get that thinking done properly. Well, when she got back from the conference where they met, she admitted having been attracted to a guy on the last night out. I was about to head abroad for three weeks so I asked her to get a grip on herself, which she said she will. When I left, at some point, she contacted him at work and it turned out he was interested so they started to meet up during working hours for coffee. Then she admitted that to me. Then I asked her to stop doing that and came home early by surprise. She declined to have kept in touch with him, but two days after my return, they went on to consummate PA. In a way I would say she did discuss it with me. But I was always a step behind. I know now that I could have taken a step forward by turning away from her, but even that doesn't mean she would actually have to choose because I have no way of surveillance over her 24-7, especially at her workplace. I do feel my share of the guilt. Comment. I may be wrong but I have to say, this one still stinks to me. I simply can't wrap my head around this being real. I can't rationalize any human being this week and still have the functional ability to leave the house without balling up in a corner. I know that this is super harsh but seriously, if this is real and you are foolish enough to want to stay with this woman then you need to show her that you actually are a man and everything that you've done to this point has done nothing but prove to her that you are her B. She quite simply likes to cheat, wants the variety and expects him to accept it. He needs to learn his lesson and dump her like yesterday. OP responds, last night we were intimate again and it was really intense. I can't really tell anymore if it is manipulation, but I admit not having either power or will to refuse such an experience. Weeks later, we went on the scheduled family vacation 10 days ago. Next day my company offered me a new assignment abroad. Next day my wife flipped on me yelling that I am leaving her alone to take care of the home and the kids. She also hit me a few times, I didn't fight back. We went on with the vacation. She complains about small things all the time, like leaving a tip to the bartender or choosing a bad table, or buying the wrong brand of milk. Often being aggressive, I try to ignore it. On occasion I express my resentment towards her behavior. She sometimes gives me more detail about the affair and her views of it. I resent that also, 
but it gets worked out on a daily basis. What doesn't get worked out is the fact I am trying my best and it doesn't mean anything to her. She just dismisses stuff. It totally discourages me, especially when we go out. I assume she didn't complain about table selection when she went out with her lover. I feel like I need to fill some impossible expectations to reap any reward while some other guy got everything even while not caring about her needs and wishes. So last night I couldn't take it anymore. We went out and she made a clown out of me all evening long and I flipped and told her I don't want to try anymore and that I don't need someone who takes my efforts as fuel for their own twisted games. I told her that if she had problems, she could go pursue her lover because there is more chance of him having mercy for her than her having mercy for me. I also told her I consider this marriage to be over and that to be the case since she cheated physically. She hit me a few times and trashed a lot of insults on me, even telling me she hopes I will just drop on the floor. When we got home, I took off the ring. I feel cheated on in just so many ways. We didn't touch it all last night. I slept bad and woke up sad. Took some pills. Today she wanted to come close a few times and cuddle but I avoided contact. She asked me am I staying with the decision that I don't want anything to do with her. I ignored that. I want to stay these few days for going to the beach with the kids. I don't want intimacy with her. I know that I am emotion lead in all this but just can't do any better. Few months later. I had some meltdowns but also put in some efforts to try to understand my W. Perhaps some steps towards reconciliation have been made, but there have also been some setbacks, so it is still unclear where this is going. So, these are some notes on what has been going on. We are still together, I managed to postpone the terrain work assignment. We still spend a lot of time together, we do a lot of stuff together, we sleep in the same bed, physical life is constantly at a high level. Neither one of us is in counseling. I only went alone two times in June. No new revelations about the a no contact between W and Om. She told me she ran into him a few weeks ago in a restaurant during lunchtime but they didn't talk or even make eye contact. She says that it seems the repulsion is mutual and noted that he looked very bad and miserable. Mid-July, while we were on vacation, we went out and I encouraged her, since she wanted other men, and I wanted the OM significance to fade, to pick up a guy at a club. So, we split at the club, she picked a guy, came on to him, they talked for a while, kissed, and they headed out, towards his boat. As it turned out later, he was on a sailing trip with his buddies. I saw them walking away but couldn't handle it and I stepped in and broke it off. For a few weeks W sort of resented me for doing it and I sensed that she really felt attraction for the guy. Mid-August, we arranged a swinging session with another couple of our age. We were all in the same room, W had brief, protected, intercourse with the man, but I didn't do the same with the woman. She was a very attractive woman with a nice personality, and she tried hard to help me, but I just couldn't get excited, so we broke off the whole thing. Two hours later I had intense intercourse with W I just don't want to sleep with other women. During September, we met up for drinks with few swinger couples, but we didn't engage in physical activity. Each and every time we were invited by the other couple to do so, but we rejected. Usual quarrels regarding everyday life usually end with moving the topic to her infidelity. I also seem to have paranoid ideas from time to time that she is making or maintaining contact with men, including perhaps OM. There are also occasional meltdowns from my side when something reminds me of the or some special things before the of these meltdowns consist of me accusing her and continue as heavy arguments. She sometimes makes it physical but I never return the strikes. When angry, she says that she shouldn't have confessed and that we would all be better off if she had kept it a secret, and that hurts me. During one meltdown a few days ago, I made a draft of consensual divorce papers, signed them, and gave them to her to sign. She got very angry, signed the papers, returned them to me and went away. An hour later she called me and asked me not to turn the papers in. So, I didn't. I don't know if I would have in case she hadn't called. She keeps saying that she wants us to work this out, that she is now certain that she doesn't want to sleep with other men except if I let her and with me present, that she doesn't want any emotional relationships with other men, and that she knows now what a mistake she made by having an affair. She says that she doesn't want a divorce. She is a difficult person to live with, never satisfied with anything, very impulsive and irritable. I want to make her happy but it seems I am not able to do it. Sometimes I tell her that I think she would easily leave me if she fell in love with someone else. She denies it strongly, but I think she is not even aware how close she came to that. I can't seem to get a grasp on trusting her and still feel betrayed, undeserving and inadequate. I started having regular suicidal thoughts but I managed to fight them off through being with the kids. So, this is how things are at the moment. I will try to refer to some questions with extra explanations. She didn't say it is up to her to decide on divorce. She just said she is sure she doesn't want it. And she called me and asked, not actually begged but humbly asked, me to reconsider and not file. Next day she said that she felt happy for being given the chance to continue. Most of the time she is remorseful, not as in miserable but rather introspectively, and also gives me a lot of attention. But when she pops into her angry mood, she uses the it to hurt me and it does do its purpose well. I am not afraid of her having a quick thing in a bar toilet because I know it just isn't her thing. 
her thing is falling in love and all other obsessive behaviors. She wants attention. She wants to occupy a person in whole just like she did with me. With that person she would have a five-minute dance in the restroom but she would also look for a chance to run away for as long as it could last. She promises to stay faithful. She claims to have found out that she doesn't need or want anyone else. She says that she doesn't know what else she can do to prove her commitment. But I don't need proof, I need her to accept me as I am in our life as it is, because the fact that she never did it led to the affair in the first place. And I keep telling her that, but she just doesn't get it. It seems that in vast majority of WW cases, the wives tend to avoid intimacy with their husbands as the affairs start rolling. In my case it was the exact opposite. I am fully aware that that drive is triggered by the affair, and also other people well noted. Some people never get enough attention and validation. So, whilst most advice is here in similar situations went let her go, it is not applicable for me because this one is holding on to me as firm as it gets. I already told her that if things work out for us, it is not that I can't go through something like this again, but that I don't want to go through it again. So, sort of I started feeling pressured to either let go of the marriage or let go of the affair, and I can't do neither. And also, I am troubled about what am I supposed to do about making our marriage better. Not that I think I am perfect, or even good enough, I just feel I already reached my maximum and don't see much space for improvement. She admits that nobody could make her happy. Well, I agree, with the exception of her hormones. But she claims that she won't be giving into that and that she is now fully aware that her place is with me and that there is nothing out there for her. Just so confusing. Yesterday she again flipped. After three months of thinking and combining we finally ordered the kitchen furniture. We were both equally involved in the process of choosing. We are on a budget and she continuously expressed dissatisfaction with the fact she had to accept some budget solution, but said she understood that it is realistic. As the end result, we will have a really nice kitchen, for a slightly above average price. But after the order was placed, she flipped and kept saying that it will be ugly, that the whole thing is crap because we can't buy nicer parts and that living and cooking in that kitchen will be miserable. The whole evening spiraled into an argument which ended with me asking why she keeps doing this and why doesn't she even try since I am doing all I can and even after her adultery gave us the chance to make up. To that she said that it wasn't that I gave us the chance but that it was me running after her. That really hit me in the face. I know she will once again say that she is sorry, that she says horrible things when she is angry and so on. But the fact is she is angry so often that these horrible things are not just words. And I am fully capable of understanding the situation. But I can't find the courage to give up on everything I set my life for, on maintaining a family for my daughters. I don't need my wife to cook or clean. I do that stuff myself. It is also not that we both won't be able to find and have friends, physical partners or new life partners. But it is about commitment. I took it seriously, and have been giving all my time and efforts into making it work. There is just something so terribly wrong. I am thinking of separating. If I leave the house, she will call me back saying she is sorry and she wants us to stay together. The moment I give in to her, the circle starts again. I know that only I can break that circle. But also, if I leave the house, the kids will feel and be abandoned by their father. And I will also be separated from them. I am not saying that I am staying only for the kids, but I am terrified by the pain it would inflict on them and me not only in the short run. I am also certain that, if we hadn't any kids, she would have divorced me like a thousand times until now. Sometimes I can imagine the two of us being happy together even when the kids are grown and gone, and we get along in many ways, and she says the same and that she doesn't want anything else. But I stop believing it. I know that splitting up the family is the only way to terminate this illness of a marriage. But it will hurt and I don't want more pain. I just want the pain to stop. Maybe my whole perspective is deranged. Maybe I am manipulating and actually am the source of all, or most, bad in our marriage. She even said that I should have broken up with her a long time ago because I should have known that she deserved better than me and that she feels tricked into a life beneath the level of what she believes she is entitled to. Is it possible that I am so insane that I just think I am doing my best? Maybe I just think that I am doing things, right? Maybe I do only care about myself and use my wife and kids to satisfy my sick emotional needs. Maybe she is right and she needs to be salvaged from this. Half a year later. In short, marriage is still on. There are ups and downs, there are emotional outbursts, but life has continued to improve in all fields. We moved into a new apartment, first time as owners, our careers are doing well, and kids are still being the greatest thing ever in this world. As for two of us, old affair never resurrected, new ones haven't occurred, we had some experimenting last fall in the non-monogamy field but decided unanimously that it's not fulfilling for either one of us. Three months after last activities we did a complete STD screening and we came out clear. Intimacy is still very intense, I would dare to say beyond star bonding, all barriers of shame between us or inside us broke and we take care of each other within that. Even though my W still has verbal episodes of pride or spite, has such personality, she doesn't flaunt the affair or make excuses for it. She acts remorseful and committed to marriage reconciliation. 
She refers to her affair as the biggest mistake of her life. She gives me a lot of attention. She gives me transparency, even though I see that it doesn't guarantee anything by itself. And even though trust is not at 100%, if ever should be, I see 100% of her energy invested into our marriage and family. I have come to the point of assessing the risk of her being unfaithful to me no bigger than any random potential partner being unfaithful to me. From this point on I am starting to consider the future of our marriage without regard to her affair. Nevertheless, some downsides remain. My self-esteem is still suffering. I still fight with feelings of inadequacy as a husband and a man. The emotional balance still hasn't returned. She asks me all so often if I still loved her and I refuse to give her reassurance on that. I am fully aware that it could backfire but it is how things are at the moment. Many people advocate a divorce, and even though I don't regret choosing the ongoing reconciliation, I must admit to them that it is questionable whether the efforts are, or will be, worth it. Respect to all of you. I waited for her to initiate counseling. She didn't. Three months ago, I pressed her and told her she should show initiative, and that some help with communicating could be supportive to us. She set up a meeting with the priest who married us, we haven't seen him since the wedding. All he spoke about was forgiving, moving on and restoring love. It was very touching to talk to him as he is a very nice person, and it evoked a lot of memories, but it didn't resolve our issues. Recently my wife confided about the affair in a married friend, woman, of hers, let's call her Dolly, friends from childhood. Dolly recommended a lady counselor who allegedly helped them very much. From my W stories, year by year by year, I know for a fact Dolly and let's call him Bobby. I never actually met him. Bobby had their share of crap throughout marriage from both sides. They fought a lot. So, they go into counseling and counselor takes Dolly's side and tells Bobby he must be more supportive. So now Dolly says all is better since they are only arguing at the counselor's office, and at home they are okay. Bobby has no clue Dolly was cheating on him multiple times, or Dolly has no clue that Bobby has clue but keeps quiet. Anyway, Dolly confessed affairs to my W, and Bobby also has a job where he meets a lot of women, show business, and is often away from home. We don't know what Bobby there does but we know that he cheated his LTR ex-girlfriend with Dolly, do talk about surprise, and no infidelities are disclosed between the two or to the counselor. So, Bobby is pissed at the counselor for taking Dolly's side but he keeps his mouth shut at home. They are not arguing anymore and Dolly is looking forward to a better future. I mean, she is not a cheating wife anymore like she was before having three kids and 50 pounds extra. Now she is much more aware of her love for her husband but just needed some help from counseling to help him understand how good a marriage they have. So, as you can assume, we went to that counselor. My W tells problems started by her having an affair. Counselor nods her head. So, I listen to all that crap about stressful life and how some people are wired to have multiple partners and how affairs come from unfulfilled needs and how people have to decide themselves on how to move on. So, I said sure, this is not new to me since my W also had an E of 5 years ago. Then the counselor explained to me the difference between adultery and infidelity. And also, about unfulfilled needs, deciding how to move on etc. I won't go into more detail, you get the picture. I was a bit disappointed for not getting a cookie after the session for being such a good boy, but I hope to deserve it next time. Second session still stands unappointed. Anyway, I won't be wasting my time on that counselor anymore. No need to fix stupid. My comment. I noticed that you did not have anything positive to say about this in your swinging event you did not want to participate. Everything is about feeding her desires at your expense. She said you were draining the life out of her. She is doing that to you. Remember, all of this is going into your children's lives. They will learn that this is how a wife treats her husband and how a husband should respond in kind to it. That is what bothers me the most about all of this, the terrible environment your innocent children are being subjected to. They need at least one stable parent. Do you want them doing this to their husbands? It may help to imagine what you would tell a son of yours if his wife was doing the same to him. Please get yourself some help from family, friends you can trust and a good counselor.